BlackRock is responding to partisan critics in the investment community who are pushing back on the firm's ESG initiatives. Leslie Picker joins us right now with more on that and the latest step that we've seen. Leslie. Hey, good morning, Becky. Yeah, this involves their voter choice program. They're about a year into this program. Uh, something that Chairman and CEO Larry Fink says is part of a, quote, revolution in shareholder democracy. He's providing updates on the program to clients and corporate CEOs in a new letter that we obtained. The goal of voting choice was to give BlackRock's institutional clients, think pension funds and endowments, the options to vote on behalf of the stock that they hold through indexes, whereas historically, and in, you know, to a certain extent that's still the case, voting decisions, including matters such as board composition, executive pay, and disclosure surrounding ESG issues were outsourced to BlackRock's stewardship team. Now, Fink says in the letter that to date, clients representing 25% of the $1.8 trillion in eligible assets are enrolled in voting choice. The number of BlackRock clients interested in signing up has doubled since just May of this year, he says. The program is BlackRock's most visible response to criticisms that the world's largest asset manager has become too powerful and has an ESG-oriented agenda. Republican-controlled state treasurers have pulled more than $1.5 billion from BlackRock funds over concerns that the firm's support of stakeholder capitalism and efforts surrounding ESG run counter to local politics and fiduciary duties. BlackRock, though, has emphasized that it's committed to offering clients choice and delivering the best financial outcomes consistent with their preferences. Becky. You know, the, this has been so interesting, and obviously this is something BlackRock did mm -hmm. over a year ago, as you mentioned, rolling this out. It's now something that you're seeing some of the other big money managers get into the game with, too. Just yesterday, Vanguard put out That's right. uh, a, a notice about how it's going to be looking at some sort of program for retail investors. Um, you had Schwab saying this a few weeks ago, maybe three weeks mm -hmm. ago, talking about this. Um, it, it's a very difficult proposition. It seems like it should be straightforward. If you supposedly own these shares, you should get to vote. vote. But in reality, <clears throat> retail investors, all of us, own, if you have a mutual fund or an ETF, you own shares in that, not the underlying uh, actual stock. Right. And that's where it gets a little complicated. That's right. So <clears throat> as Fink says in the letter, certain things have to change to make this ubiquitous, including technology has to be altered. Policymakers have to be on board regulations. So basically, the reason why we're seeing 25 percent of eligible assets so far having, you know, these institutional clients sign up for this is because, um, you know, there are only a certain subset of the amount of assets that BlackRock manages that's even eligible due to hurdles, like you mentioned, such as uh, regulation and technology. And so there has to be a somewhat of a sea change of the whole ecosystem to see this become more popular right. and to become more ubiquitous. Um, but he's confident that uh, ultimately that's where they'll be, and that's kind of that next phase of shareholder democracy. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.